I'm Ricky. This is my Megan converted Clio 200 Cup. I picked it up. This will be six years in September this year. That just sort of got a bit out of hand, and it, ne it never, it never left. So originally these come uh, two litre NA 197 brake. Dropped the Megan engine in. Before mapping with the Pro Alloy intercooler, it made 250, and then injectors bigger exhaust. It pulled 310 on the dyno and then we capped it at 305, 300. It's sort of the upper side of the safe limit. But they, they, these, have, these have gone at 260, 270, the engines have given up. The chassis handles it very, very well. The position I'm in at the minute, I would like to be at even just to buy a daily car and then this to be solely used on, on track. At the minute is what I have to use daily. I love it. I mean, a lot of people don't like it. It's not the most practical car. I don't, I've not got a lot of passengers that I need to take around to two seats is enough for me at the minute. There's a company called Beanie Sport, run by a bloke called Chris. He offers a drive-in, drive-out service. Picks a car for you, tries to pick them up sort of sub 80k. I wanted one less than 50, and he, he managed to source one about 4,000 pound for a Megane 225 swap, but I wanted the R26 LSD gearbox from factory. All the same engine mounts. The only thing the, the header tank needed rerouting over to behind one of the wings. But other than that, it's, I don't want to say a straight swap, but it is, it's mounted the same. Clear loom gets spliced into the Megane loom. From a professional point of view, it's probably very simple to do. I was at a French car show, seen them all stripped out and just thought that'd be a silly thing to do, so why not? I mean, ideally I'd like to get a set of fixed buckets in here and a set of harnesses. Since I had the car, there was a set of feed lines that sort of come as standard on the cups. I was gonna buy, purchase a set of uh, OZ Ultra Legeras. They're very similar and they're 500 pound cheaper, so that was, it was a no-brainer, really. I love the sound of these. Like, I don't get what people's issue is with no, it. I, Do you? No, I think they sound all right. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Um, I had his issues. I mean, 
what's kind of gone wrong since you've had the McGann engine in? I um, had an issue with the car was completely immobilising itself. Okay. And, uh, turns out that there wasn't really much wrong. No, it was just on, French. On, on the, basically, yeah. And lo and behold, there was wire an issue. Um, the passenger side front wheel arch liner had split. Okay. And when I, that literally came down to me when I was washing, washing the car, or washing the wheels, water was getting in, and uh, there's a fuse box that sits just above the wheel arch, and I was just soaking the fuse box. So when, when that was wet, that was shortened, and uh, that would completely mobilise the car. And, oh, uh, that's a sucky problem. Yeah, and it's not, well, you wouldn't look for it. I mean, to, to look at, I mean, the fuse box was bone dry. But sure. where the water, you take the, they sort of got like a foam, um, like a foam seal on them. Sure. And uh, that just, that fills up with water and completely expands. And maybe that was just soaking wet in there. So what have you done to kind of protect against that now? Or was it just a new, a new yes, arch liner and that'll do? New arch liner, I didn't, I didn't realise, all the clips were missing out the wheel arch liner and it sort of, it sort of sagged forward. Sure. And uh, there was probably about a half inch split in there and that was, you could see, where just how it was happening. Get, water was getting in. Oh, it just doesn't feel like a Clio should do that. <laughs> I think it's great fun. Oh, mate. So with this swap, you've kind of touched on drive shafts and things. What shafts do you have to use? Uh, they are the McGann drive shafts. The McGann shafts into the Clio hubs. And they they bolt right up. Yeah, they're sort. Of, I think they're slightly. To my knowledge, they're slightly modified. Okay. Um, it's very, very compact. Yeah, there's really not much room kind of in no. that engine bay, is there? No. Well, they just they weren't made to have the room for a turbo, that manifold, or the no. downpipe and things that has to come. You've got three inch exhaust on this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the only uh, one in it. Scorpion. What's your favourite thing about the car? Now, probably yeah. the engine swap, hands down. What was that first drive like? I couldn't wait to get back. I was working. Uh, he messaged me on Facebook and said, um, the car's ready to pick up, and I still had another week and a half left of work, and I wasn't at home, so I couldn't go and get it, so I was itching to go and get it. And uh, <laughs> like I say, that was a very spirited two and a half hour drive back from Milton Keynes. Oh, that was great. Do it, Snetterton. Like, like I say, surprisingly well. Um, could they are, they're great cars. Oh, yeah. And, um, I mean, it, held, 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 it holds its own. It does hold, hold its own. Um, I can't imagine there'd have been too much go past you. No, like I said, you can chuck this into corners a lot quicker than you can chuck a big, bulky sort of M5 into a corner. <laughs> just want to say a huge thank you to Ricky for coming on the channel today absolutely love this Clio I know for an absolute fact that if I was to have one of these that I would be looking to have that additional power from the McGann swap huge shout out to Beanie Sport they seem like an incredible really affordable way of actually getting this done with really good customer service done in a good time frame so if you liked what you saw today guys don't forget to like share and subscribe 